Hi, this is Elias Nikonakopoulos and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 80 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating again the concept of failing all the way to success. The patient had previous coronary bypass graft surgery, as seen by the sternal wires, and presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction that was due to a severe lesion in the proximal right coronary artery. There was a patent lima to LAD and patent circumflex system. The next question is how to approach such a patient, because in addition to the lesion, there is also a large aneurysm on the proximal right coronary artery with dilatation of the mid and distal right coronary artery as well. There are different ways to treat the aneurysm. There is a nice review in Jack Interventions from a couple of years ago, illustrating the different ways to do them, which are either with a covered stent, essentially excluding the aneurysm from the lumen, or with putting a regular stent and then putting coils inside the aneurysm, or finally with a repeat surgery. In this case, redo cabbage was not an option, therefore the options were to put a covered stent or to do coil embolization. We start the procedure going with big femoral axis for better support and eight friends JR4 guide. The reason we used a JR4 is for more coaxial alignment in case you had delivered bulky devices. With the guide now, we see a little better visualization, still illustrating the large cavity of the aneurysm and the aneurysmal dilatation of the mid and distal right coronary. The first challenge in treating such lesions is wiring. And the reason is that the wire will, of course, want to go into the aneurysm and it will be hard to direct it uh, into the true lumen, and that's exactly what happened. So one way to get around this is to advance a microcatheter. In this case, we do have a Caravel microcatheter that is inside uh, essentially the aneurysm. And then we did try a different guide wire, specifically a Fielder FC, polymer jacketed, non-tapered guide wire. And the goal again is for the wire to make it down. Um, the wire did have issues and we can see that the microcatheter actually prolapsed into the aneurysm cavity. The natural next choice here, should this fail, would be to actually bring an angulated microcatheter, such as the Venture or the Supercross, that can create an angle and facilitate directing the wire inferiorly. But in this particular case, after several attempts, we were fortunate in that the field RFC wire actually did track into the mid-RCA and then with slow manipulation eventually made it uh, down to the right coronary artery. So sometimes persistence with standard guide wires can pay off. And here is again the successful attempt where through the caravel the guide wire finds its way on the right coronary artery and all the way to the distal. Our initial plan was to deliver a stiff guide wire, specifically a grand slam, to provide better support for whatever equipment we wanted to do. So to do that, we advanced the caravel all the way down and then used uh, a grand slam, but unfortunately it was too stiff and pushed the entire system out. You can see the guide, all the position is lost. So fail, failure number one, but keeping on, we repeated the steps with the caravel and the field RFC, and this time we inserted a softer guide wire, specifically a long Sion Blue guide wire, and then we were able to advance a balloon and predilate the proximal right coronary artery. And this is now better visualization of the right after the proximal lesion is um, a little better. There may be some area of uh, dissection or just the, the other part of the aneurysm, but the flow is definitely better towards the distal right coronary artery. And uh, we decided to do IVUS to better understand uh, the aneurysm as well as the proximal and distal part of the neck. And this is the aneurysm. Uh, there is um, the mid-RCA is big, and then as we go to the aneurysmal cavity, we actually start losing part of the wall because it was so large. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, so almost seven plus millimeters. And then we're again in the aneurysm, coming back, we only see one part of the wall because the distance is so large. But eventually now we're in the proximal RCA, there's some calcification, and then eventually we make it uh, back uh, all the way to the aorta. We predilate again with a 3.0 millimeter balloon. And uh, now the question is how to treat this. Should we go with a cover stand or should we treat uh, with uh, coils and uh, a regular stand? 
And our approach was to try to use uh, a cover stand to exclude the aneurysm from the circulation. We therefore took a 5.0 by 26 millimeter papyrus based on the measurements from IVUS and tried to deliver it. And that was a phenomenal failure. You can see that everything jumped out. It was very hard to deliver it because of the difficulty and the calcification of the lesion in the proximal right coronary artery. We realized that we needed better support, so we changed the guide. And now we do have an 8 friends AL1 guide that can provide a little stronger support. We repeated the process once again for uh, wiring down the RCA with the Caravel and the field RFC. Every time we did this, it became a little easier because of we knew the trick. We advanced the Caravel and then tried to probe until the wire points down and then slowly came on advancing it. And then eventually we had um, uh, successful wiring again. This is an example of failing, failing, but again, at least we'll learn our way a little better. It's time that um, this thing happens. And again, once again, it finds its way down to the right coronary artery. This time, we were able to deliver a Grand Slam guide wire through the Caravel microcatheter. But unfortunately, once again, we, we were not able to place the stand. Everything was lost. So how to proceed next? Uh, the next step is we went with the bigger balloon, trying to uh, improve the lesion in the proximal RCA. Uh, but then we still had difficulty, and then we decided to use a guide extension. This is a 8 friends guide liner that is being advanced. And then we use the inch warming technique to deliver it further down. Balloon is inflated. That was a tour balloon, deflated, and once it's deflated, the guide extension is being advanced. That brings us a little further back. We repeat the process, inflate, deflate, advance, and every time the guide extension seems to be coming a little more forward. And then eventually we were able to bring it essentially all the way inside the aneurysm and close to the distal edge of the aneurysm. And this time the 5.0 um, cover stem had been destroyed, could not actually cross uh, from the collar of the guide liner, but uh, this is a 4.0 by 26 millimeter papyrus stem, and this actually did go through the collar, no problem, and actually delivered uh, very nicely into the uh, proximal to mid right coronary artery through the guide extension. The papyrus stand was unsheathed, and then uh, after a contrast injection to verify position, this is positioned nicely here, just distal to the neck of the aneurysm, and proximally seems to be covering most of it. It was deployed, and uh, this is encouraging because the contrast is actually entrapped into the aneurysmal cavity, and this is the angiogram afterwards showing good result. There's actually exclusion of the aneurysm cavity. There is no increase in the contrast density after injection. And then um, uh, we do have good flow distally. Um, we did uh, IVUS again. It was fairly hard to deliver the IVUS, uh, but uh, after a few attempts, we were able to get it down partially into the uh, covered stand. And then it does so um, good expansion of the covered stand, essentially all the way back, um, and the ostium is uncovered. So to cover the ostium, we took a 40 by 18 millimeter drug diluting stand and stand it all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. This is what can be challenging sometimes with amplets. The JR4 is much more friendly, but by disengaging the amplets and doing non-selective um, engaged injections, we were able to nail the ostium and uh, got a nice result with Timothy flow in the right coronary. There are some distal lesions, but we decided to not treat them. That was clearly the culprit, and there was diffuse disease distally. We did a final IVUS, the main reason uh, being to ensure that we had covered the ostium. And uh, indeed, as we move uh, back uh, towards the aorta, uh, we can see that uh, the stent is present essentially all the way out to the aorta. So we do have coverage of the ostium of the vessel with the covered stand and the drug eluting stand. So several interesting observations from this case. The first one is how to wire through an aneurysm. The solution in this particular case goes by using the combination of a microcatheter, Caraval, as well as a non-tapered polymer jacketed soft guide wire, uh, the field RFC. The second is how to facilitate delivery through challenging anatomy. 
we did use uh, eventually a stiff guide wire, which was the Grand Slam. We did, we did use eight French guides. JR4 did not work, so L1 actually was the one that was successful. And finally, we did use a guide liner, an eight French guide liner, through which the covered stand could be delivered. For treating the aneurysm, covered stands versus coils, in this particular case, covered stand worked well. And uh, lastly, this case shows once again the importance of being persistent. There were several challenges that had to be overcome. We had to wire the right coronary several times during the case. However, by persisting, a nice result was finally achieved. Thank you.